Hey everybody, so today's video is one that's a, quite a serious topic, um, but it's something I have a fair amount of experience with, um, and that is what to expect if you present to a &E with mental health problems. And I don't mean like if you present a &E because you've broken your leg and you happen to have mental health problems too, I mean like if you present a &E because of your mental health problems. Um, this is something I've done a few times. <laughs> yeah a good few times um and I think there's like a lot of stigma around it and so I thought I would just lay out kind of like what you can expect because I think people are quite scared about having to do that and like I know people have different experiences but like in my experience it's really not like as scary as I maybe like thought it would have been in the beginning um but I would just like to disclaimer this with like if you can go to see your GP about your mental health problems before it gets to the point where you need to go to a &E, that is a much better option. Don't wait until you need to go to hospital. I don't know if you can hear the background, there's background noise, but we'll just keep going. Um, like, you should always go to your GP, um, but if you find yourself in a mental health crisis, um, then a and &E is, is a safe place to go to and they are like you know they're like fully aware of like mental health and they have psych teams that can assess you so we'll do like a walkthrough of what happens or in my experience what's happened i think people other people may have different experiences but this is like my experience of what will happen so um you go in like you normally would um unless you're brought in by an ambulance um you would go in and they triage you. So this is the same whether you walk in or get taken in by an ambulance, is you get triaged. Um, the only difference is if you come in by ambulance, the paramedics talk to reception and or they talk to the nurse in charge and they like like find somewhere for you to go. Whereas if you walk in, you go straight to reception and you explain to them what's happened and you can say like, I'm feeling suicidal, I've self-harmed, I'm having difficult thoughts, I, my mental health is really bad. Any of these things, like you just express how you're feeling um, in like a nutshell, I guess. And then you sit and wait and usually if you, um, they usually see you, they showed you fairly quickly, especially if you're distressed because they don't want you sat in the waiting room kind of sitting on that like feeling like I can be quite agitated so I usually get seen like relatively quickly because they don't want me sat in the waiting room kind of like like that basically um and then so you get sort of triaged and then for me I usually get put in the ED flow on a bed because usually I need to just sleep and then see psych so other, I've, other times I've been kept waiting in the waiting room depends on what kind of state I'm in when I come in and I think the thing to remember is if you've physically hurt yourself or you've been in a situation where you've been physically hurt or there's a medical reason where you need to physically be treated first that will always override the mental health issues so you need to be physically treated before psych will see you and then they'll see you so if you've taken an overdose if you've harmed yourself if you've um I don't know, thrown, done anything like that. I'm not gonna list off all the things you could do, but you, you get the point, like all of these, the horrible things you could do to yourself. If you've done that, then they're gonna treat you for that first before they treat the mental health. Um, so if you come in in the evening at night time, you will probably have to stay overnight to see the psychiatric team, um, which is not, I will give you a fair warning, in my experience, it's not the comfiest night's sleep you will ever have. Um, so like bear that in mind like it's not this isn't a comfortable option but it, you're safe and on one occasion i've had to stay overnight and um i was given a crisis nurse who sat and watched me and actually as weird as it was to have someone kind of watching me it was quite nice that the hospital cared enough to dedicate a nurse to just follow me around um so sometimes there'll be someone there to make sure that you're safe. Um, yeah, and then in the morning, if you've had to stay overnight, in the morning someone will kind of offer you some food if you've been, I usually get moved on to observation 
and someone offers you like breakfast, like toast, cereal, coffee or something, and you just have to sit there and wait then for psychiatric team to see you. They're called liaison psychiatry and that basically their job is, as far as I'm aware, is they're there to help with the mental health problems of people that present at a &E and other departments. Oh, I thought someone was about to come in there. Oh my God, this is so awkward. Um, so there I, I mean, if anyone has a better definition of what liaison psychiatry is, feel free to put it in the comments because that's the best way I can explain it and I think there's probably a better way. Um, yeah, and they will assess you and they will decide. And they can be a bit intimidating and they can be a bit frustrating, but in my experience, like, I've come to kind of like them because the best support I had, I got through liaison psychiatry apart from my care coordinator that I got through the university because the university referred me to a psychiatrist who referred me to the care coordinator kind of thing. So that's kind of in a nutshell what the experience would be. So if you can see like it's really not like as horrifying as people think it's going to be. I mean it really depends on like what's happened. Like if you take an overdose you're going to have to have blood tests. Like you may be put on a drip. Um, if you've self-harmed, they're gonna have to treat it. Like, these things are not gonna be pleasant to go through, but they're not unbearable. Um, and just remember, like, you're there to get better. Um, don't feel guilty about being there because you have every right to be there as much as everyone else, like, just everyone's equal. Um, so yeah, in a nutshell, like, you get triaged, then you get put somewhere, <laughs> then a doctor will see you, you wait, psychiatry will see you, and you'll come up with like an action plan. That's it. That's what happens. Um, if I've never been at the point where, where I've presented has been so severe that I need to be hospitalized, like in a psychiatric hospital, um, but I will link um, a channel in the description of someone who has and does talk about it on their channel. And so if that's something you're interested in, if you're concerned that maybe that might be what would happen to you, then um, you can watch her videos. Her name is Pip Rudge, she's amazing. Um, I love her videos. So yeah, that's it for my video today. Um, I hope all of that made sense and thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe as always because it makes me happy. Bye.